To tell you the truth, I've been hesitant to make this video. It is really hard for me to share my thoughts and emotions in such a public way, but I feel like this video will be helpful to those who are facing dialysis. The hardest time for me during this journey of kidney failure was the last few months before I had to start dialysis. I could no longer ignore the fact that I would have to do dialysis if I wanted to live. My kidneys had failed and there was nothing I could do to stop it. I had to face it, I had to accept it, and either replan my life around doing dialysis or let nature run its course. And even for me, at 40 years old, with a family and a whole lot to live for, the emotional and physical toll of going through kidney failure and facing dialysis was extremely hard. There were times when the negative thoughts and feelings were so loud that it was hard to see past them. The first emotional challenge that I wanna to touch on when facing dialysis is the feeling of denial and wanting to escape from this new reality. We knew that our kidneys were failing, but now that we've reached the dreaded end stage renal failure, there is a strong drive to escape and run away but we can't anymore. And having to face this new situation that's been hanging over us and weighing us down for months and sometimes even years can be hard and emotional draining to say the least. Facing the fact that our lives will never be the same, you know, not only for us, but for those that we love can feel overwhelming and depressing. And it is so easy to turn to bad habits, to distract ourselves from feeling and dealing with all these heavy emotions. The second emotional challenge that I wanna talk about when facing dialysis is anger. In some ways, this is easier to deal with because it's a little bit safer, I guess, to express. But there is a strong feeling of resentment and anger towards doctors who either didn't help us or failed to pick up this condition earlier. And it is difficult to not become bitter. This feeling of resentment and distrust is heightened because now we've got to get used to new doctors and new nurses when we feel like the medical system has let us down. And often these doctors will feel distant and cold and unfeeling as they bluntly lay out bad news and worst case scenarios. The third emotional challenge that I would like to talk about is loss. We have to mourn for the loss of the life we had and for the future we imagined. That future is gone and it's hard to see anything but darkness ahead of us. Not only is it hard to create a new and different future, but to also feel like that new and different future is worthwhile. You will experience thoughts of dying and letting yourself pass away, more so as your mind and your body shut down as your kidneys fail. And having this lack of physical energy makes it hard to feel like you have the strength and the ability to keep fighting. The next emotional challenge is the feelings of guilt and remorse that we could have or should have done something different to avoid having to do dialysis. I've spent many sleepless nights and hours in the day looking back over my life, trying to make sense of this situation that I am in, feeling that having to do dialysis was my own fault and that somehow I deserve it because of the choices I made. These feelings of guilt and remorse are very heavy and hard to share with other people. As your kidney function declines, you will have a significant lack of energy to the point that you'll spend most of your day resting and you'll find it difficult to do the daily tasks that you need to do to keep yourself healthy. Having this lack of energy causes a lot of fear and trepidation for the future. You will ask yourself questions like, how in the world am I going to be able to do dialysis if showering and feeding myself is exhausting? And will I have time and the energy to take care of my children, my spouse, or my grandchildren? And will I be able to still do fun things with the people that I love? There's fear of becoming just a number and feeling like an invalid. We're also afraid of the pain and discomfort that we might experience. We often ask ourselves questions like, what will the quality of my life be when I'm on dialysis and how much pain will I feel and how strong will that pain be? 
The sixth emotional challenge is the fear of being abandoned. Having to do dialysis will significantly affect your life and those of your friends and family. And you'll worry that by having to rely on them, you will become a burden to them and they might resent you. This one is hard to express and talk about to those that we love because what if the answer is yes? This fear will cause us to pull away from those around us and those that we love because it is easier to be the one that pulls away than to feel like we've been left behind. The seventh emotional challenge that many of us face is worrying about our health and our safety. Because of course we've read and people are more than willing to share the awful stories that they've heard about dialysis. And, and we worry about the infections that we might get and the pain that we might experience. I don't know why, but for some reason, negative thoughts and negative stories stick with us so much better than the positive ones. As your kidney fails, you'll experience brain fog. For me, it was more like I just didn't have the energy to focus and make my brain work. Many people experiencing end-stage renal failure are also anemic. Plus, when your kidneys aren't functioning, the level of toxins in your blood, like creatinine, are way too high. So your brain isn't functioning the way it should, and we know it. And that makes us nervous and unsure when we go over our labs or we are assigned a new medication to really kind of understand what's happening. That leads me to our eighth emotional challenge, which is feeling like our life is out of our own control and that we have to rely on someone else. As an adult who has spent decades being responsible for ourselves, the feeling of giving up that independence and freedom can be depressing and debilitating. In our despair, we may lash out in anger when really we're not mad at you. We just don't know how to deal with this situation we're in. And also because of the slowness of thought, we worry if we'll be able to remember all the things that we have to do, all the safety steps and precautions that we need to take before doing dialysis and during dialysis, if we'll be able to remember to go to all of our appointments and if we'll be able to remember all the medications we have to take. And this can feel very overwhelming. The last emotional challenge that I would like to touch on is dealing with financial stress. Worrying about money is very stressful. We wonder if, how much our insurance will cover. Will we qualify for benefits? Will I be able to work? And how much financial strain will this put on our family? We'll even have thoughts of, Will it be easier on my family if I were just to pass away rather than having to pay for dialysis? And what kind of life will my family have if we have to go into debt just to keep me alive? These dark and heavy feelings are hard to deal with. Overcoming them isn't something we can just snap our fingers at or decide that we're fine. Emotions don't work that way. If we ignore them and constantly push them down, these powerful feelings will find ways of surfacing that aren't always helpful, healthy, and can sometimes be harmful to ourselves and to those we love. I compiled a list of ways that helped me deal with these formidable emotions. Now, everyone is different and these may not work for you and that's okay. I hope some of these ideas will help you be able to find ways that will actually be helpful to you. Now, if your emotions and feelings are overwhelming and you feel like you just can't deal with life, please tell somebody and seek help. There are a lot of therapists out there that are good and that will help you. The first tip is to give yourself permission to feel all the feels. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry and frustrated. It's okay to be nervous and make sure that you give yourself time to deal with all these feelings. You will have both physical and emotional challenges to overcome, and often these emotions will come in waves, and you'll find that you'll have to deal with the same thoughts and the same feelings again and again, and that's okay, that's perfectly normal. Acknowledge to yourself that this situation you are in is hard and difficult, but know that you are stronger, and if you continue to push through and move forward, these emotions and thoughts will not drown you or smother you. My second tip is to talk, talk, and talk some more. Talk to a trusted family member or a friend who helps and supports you. You may have lost your trust in doctors, 
but there are other healthcare providers that can help and support you. There are therapists, there are mental health specialists, and there are social workers. The third tip is if you're not a talker, become a writer. Writing in your journal can be a great outlet for your emotions and your feelings and can give you the opportunity to organize your thoughts. You can start by writing your life history, share your knowledge, your stories, your life experiences. Your life has a purpose and your thoughts and experiences are worth hearing and learning from. Starting dialysis will not only greatly affect your life, but also those around you. So my fourth tip is to listen and allow your friends and your family to talk with you about what they feel and what they're afraid of. It can be hard to start up this kind of conversation, but by doing so, it'll make it easier for you and for your loved ones to speak and talk with each other. And it can often become a bonding experience. But please be aware that not everybody is going to be able to emotionally support you. In no way does that make what you shared and expressed wrong or not valid. It just means that you're gonna need to find somebody else who can support you in this way. The fifth tip is to let go of the what ifs. These what ifs, could have, should haves can really bring you down, so let them go. You can't go back, you can't fix what happened, so let the guilt go. Look forward, spend your thoughts and energy on being positive and living in the here and the now. Try to ground yourself when these emotions get overwhelming. Try to think about what you see, what you hear, and try to look at life in a positive way. The sixth tip is to continue to strive to eat healthy and to exercise. I know that this can seem like wasted energy and time because no matter what you do, you're gonna end up on dialysis. Your kidneys may have given up, but you don't have to. The seventh tip is allowing yourself time to get used to doing dialysis. Now, doing dialysis will become the new norm and much less of a burden. It'll become something that you just have to do on a daily basis. And I know that's hard to kind of picture and understand before you do dialysis, but trust me, it will become easier and not stressful. The eighth tip is to try to look at dialysis in a positive way. I know that it is something that we have to do to stay alive, but if we can change our perspective and the angle that we look at it, it might be easier to handle. If we think of dialysis as a gift and that we're grateful that we're able to have this opportunity, I think it will be easier to deal with all these heavy and hard emotions. The ninth tip is to make sure that you do things that you enjoy and spend time with people that make you happy. If you need to find new friends or a new group of people, that's okay. I just find that it's really important to make sure that you find fulfillment in your life. I know I talk about this one a lot and I think it's because I didn't really do this until a year into my uh, dialysis. I felt guilty that I was ill and I was taking a lot of these resources from my family and my children were not able to do as many activities after school that I would just do everything that I felt like I had to do and then go to bed exhausted and wake up and do that again the next day. And it wasn't until I went on a wedding anniversary that I realized I need to spend time enjoying life. And I made that a priority and it it made all the difference in the world. It helped me be a lot more positive and uplifting and to those around me and to, you know, and for myself. So don't put it off. And it really, really helps if you have something to look forward to. The 10th tip is to let people help you. By doing so, you're not being an invalid, lazy, or letting go of your pride and independence. Instead, you are prioritizing what energy you have in the best way you know how. And I understand how hard this can be, especially with that fear that your loved ones might distance themselves from you. But you might be surprised by those who will gather around you, who will support you, who will love you, and who will help you. Reaching kidney failure can feel like a fatal blow to your life and you'll wonder, how can I get through this? It's too much. And some days it really will be like that and hopefully you'll be able to get through with help from family and friends. But remember that tomorrow will come and if you keep moving forward, 
it will get easier. Try not to let the negative thoughts and fears of the unknown deprive you of your daily life and the simple joys of being alive. You are more than this disease. You are someone with thoughts, life experiences, and things to offer the world. I'm sure there are things that you still want and wish to do, and you can do them. It just might look a little bit different and take you longer to do, and that's okay. I'm rooting for you. And thanks for watching.